Thank you very much, Mr. Paisley. I too pay tribute to the member for Oldham East and Saddleworth for organising this really uh, crucial debate. As has been said, the number of people suffering in the UK is 850,000, and I apologise, I've already said suffering instead of living with. <laughs> because many are. We talk about what's being done in pockets. We talk about what's being done well. But that isn't being done for the 850,000. So there are people stuck in their houses, having people behind them in supermarkets tutting at them, or being made unwelcome in places. So until we can say all 850,000 are living well with dementia, we haven't done our jobs. There's 90,000 in Scotland, and as has been mentioned, those under 65, we have over 3,000. And obviously, it's been touched on, the impact on them. But of all patients with dementia, only two-thirds are estimated to have been diagnosed, which means we actually don't have a handle on the scale of the problem. Alzheimer's, which many people use as an interchangeable term, is the commonest form of dementia. But we also have vascular dementia, and in many patients, it's mixed. A rarer form, Lewy body dementia, um, actually causes quite a particular type with less memory loss but big impacts on movement and particularly hallucinations. And this is something our police should know about, something our firefighters should know about because if they've had 50 calls from the same patient, it may be because it's not a burglar, it's hallucinations of a burglar. And that's why we need to integrate all of our public services so they learn from each other. Other conditions like HIV and Parkinson's can also lead to dementia. Now, many people know about memory loss, but they're not so aware of the difficulty making decisions, the problems with concentration, and particularly the spatial awareness. The people with advanced dementia really have difficulty in moving around in our environments, and that's worse if certain parts of the brain are impacted. Unfortunately, treatment at the moment is very limited. We've not had any new drugs since 2002. The commonest used is drugs to stop the breakdown of acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter that sends messages from one brain cell to the next. Now, this can improve concentration, but it's not actually a drug against whatever the underlying cause is. And part of that is because we don't understand all the underlying causes. We see the breakdown of proteins. We see bits of proteins appearing in the brain. We see brain cells getting tangled up. But what exactly is causing all of that? So we really need to upscale research to a totally game-changing level to understand the cause so that we can try to prevent it and so that we can try to treat it. In Scotland in 2013, they set up the Scottish Dementia Research Consortium as an umbrella organisation to try and bring all projects together. And there is laboratory research into the cause and treatment, but also research into a human rights approach to those living with dementia. And that is critical in improving support and care. We're also looking at trying to adapt our health and <coughs> care systems. As was mentioned by my colleague, Scotland is, has just published, well, two years ago now, a national strategy, which is their third. The first was in 2010. This one will focus on the whole pathway. So from providing post-diagnostic support right through to end of life and including community coordinators. Because this is the disease our generation fears. My grandmother feared TB. They didn't name it. They called it consumption. The people I looked after as a surgeon feared cancer. But what many of us fear now is to lose ourselves, as we've heard described so graphically this morning, or to lose the person that we've loved all of our adult lives. Providing social care is critical to both those living with dementia and their families. Now, in Scotland, we spend more on social care, and that allows us to provide free personal care. That means if someone is able to be supported at home, to live with independence and dignity, this is not costing them or their family. Since Frank's law came into effect just two months ago in Scotland, this now also applies 
to those under 65. And therefore, it's related to the illness they have. It's related to their needs without a bizarre cutoff at 65. That means a 64-year-old wouldn't get the care that they actually require. The problem is we're struggling to recruit people as carers, whether in care homes or in co care, home care. And most people want to be cared for in their own home, but it is very labour intensive. Now, some of this is being made worse by Brexit. And in parts of Scotland, in the Highlands, 30% of all carers are from Europe. This is going to be an existential problem for these services. But it's also we need to turn caring into a proper professional career with career development, training, and a decent decent salary that rewards the very difficult job that they actually do. It is critical that we are supporting the person all along that journey. All we have to do is sit in this room and imagine ourselves in that clinic getting that diagnosis and then going home and there's nothing, no information, no support, no one to answer questions. The integration agenda, which is further down the line in Scotland, is linking things up. But having linked up our NHS back into integration after devolution, integrating health and social care is a lot harder. It's much more fragmented because it's provided by multiple private companies. We have multiple projects going on in Scotland that are often recognised through Scotland's Dementia Awards. My local health board has won one for their Bridging the Gap pro uh, project, which provides a dementia support advisor to liaise between hospital, community, and family along the journey. In Wishaw, they have a theatre buddy. If someone with dementia requires surgery, they are there at the last moment, they are there when they wake up. That could be a worker, that could be a relative. And one that I particularly like, the provision of assistance dogs who've actually been trained by prisoners in Castle Huntley which means it's a double win. The prisoners gain pride that they are helping someone in the community, and those living with dementia have the assistance dogs. But for those who are living with dementia now, the most important thing is to make them welcome and included in the communities that we live in. I was lucky enough in 2016 to be invited to speak at the launch of Dementia Friendly Prestwick, which is led by a very impressive team, particularly Julie and Lorna, who are leading lights within it. I hadn't done any of the work in setting it up. I was just asked to give a speech at the launch. And I was inspired by that to set up dementia-friendly Troon, which is the community that I live in. In Prestwick, they've been running a relaxed cinema for three years. They have subtitles. It's free. It's not so dark. They serve home baking. They have had a local potter make double-handed cups. And the baking is all done by Berylands, one of our local nursing homes. They were finalists in the Scottish Dementia Awards. And the sound and screen are really high quality. I went to watch one of the movies. And that's provided by Friends of the Broadway, an old cinema in Prestwick. In Troon, we have relaxed golf. We have an allotment, which is supported by other gardeners. Because we all started with, why do we love living in Ayrshire? And how do we help people to hang on to that for as long as possible? I apologise for not being here at a meeting with the Turkish ambassador. I just couldn't be here earlier. Just, just say one thing. The, the, in relation to, to families and close relatives, does the Honourable Lady agree that uh, greater support services for those living with a struggle to enable families to take care of their loved ones is really important as long as possible before putting them into care facilities? Absolutely. Um, I mean, I think care should be provided in the home, if at all possible. That's where we would all want to be. Um, the member for Air Carrick and Cumnock mentioned the, the hotel room, which uses colour, but also uses technology to make it easier for the person with dementia, but also their carer to be there. They provide guided walks. They are redesigning the promenade um, to make it easier to move around. And they're part of the Cycling Without Age, where every Sunday afternoon they provide cycle rides along the promenade on the tri -shows. And our local airport, Prestwick, the staff have had the training to make them a dementia-friendly airport. All of this depends on Alzheimer's Scotland, who provide the training to them and other small businesses, like hairdressers and cafes. 
We are the ones who have to make the change. All it asks us to do is to be patient, not to be tutting behind someone in a supermarket. We've managed to get two supermarkets in our area to provide relaxed lanes where people will not be rushed, where people will be invited and chatted to as they come through. So all of us, let's be less hectic and let's make everyone feel welcome in our communities.